Welcome to Endgame Finance. Today, guys, we're talking about Rivian. Rivian has been a really hot stock for the last several weeks. It's up over 100% in that time frame. However, today we want to focus on several things Argus Karinz, the CEO of Rivian, recently mentioned in an interview. And so let's look at this article from Inside EVs and just see what Argus Karinz really thinks about electrification of basically every single vehicle in the future. and how R2 will play a role in that electrification. R2 is slated to begin production in 2026. It will be a cheaper, more affordable model of the R unit vehicles that are currently being produced by Rivian. Basically, RJ is saying that ICE vehicle, buying an ICE vehicle is like building a horse barn in 1910. Around 1910 is basically where all the ICE cars came out, internal, internal combustion engine vehicles came out. So it made no sense to buy a horse when you can now just have this uh, convenience of just driving everywhere. You don't have to feed it. You don't have to make sure it stays alive. You don't have to clean up after it defecates. So there was a huge advantage of buying cars in 1910 over buying a horse and building a barn for that horse. RJ goes on to say, like, imagine buying a Chevy Suburban in 2030. Like, what are you going to do with it, right? In 10 years, yeah, like gas stations will be slowly disappearing. It's just weird. So RJ is basically saying there will be no maintenance for these ICE cars in the future. Traditional gasoline vehicles will become obsolete because there will be no gas stations to fuel them up. There will be no mechanics to work on them because everyone will be switching to electric. Basically, all the engineers, all the mechanics, they've all be switching slowly to working on electric vehicles. And you, you will be pressed hard to find someone who can fix your car in the future if you own a gasoline-powered vehicle. And you will have a really hard time finding, finding a gas station because all of these gas stations will not be profitable anymore. So they will just vanish. The charging infrastructure has been gaining huge ground, especially after recently Tesla opened their supercharging network to basically everyone. And that is exchanged for government subsidies. So they're not doing that out of the goodness of their own heart. They're basically getting a lot of money from the government to let everyone else use these superchargers. But nevertheless, that is really accelerating the adoption of electric vehicles because people are no longer anxious about their range. They're not anxious about not knowing where they will charge their vehicles. Now there are tens of thousands of charging stations across the United States and Europe. So that range anxiety is going away. These traditional gas stations are being replaced by supercharging networks. Earlier in this interview for Heatmap, RJ says that performance envelope and the availability of electric vehicles make it so much more desirable than the alternative. Buying a non-EV feels very old. Aside from carbon emissions and environmental responsibility, it's just not interesting. And that's really true because it takes a really long it takes a really long time for an ICE traditional gasoline power vehicle to even just accelerate when you're pulling out. You have to step on the pedal and then wait a couple of seconds for the car to move. This can be really problematic when you're merging on highways or if you just want to avoid that collision you see coming, but those couple of seconds you just don't have and those couple of seconds you do have in EVs which have instant torque. Basically you press on the gas pedal, car just takes off and it's a lot more fun, it's a lot easier to control. Furthermore, in this interview, CEO basically says that the next generation Model R2 will reel in a lot more customers compared to R1, thanks to lower starting price. R2 will simplify manufacturing with fewer parts while leveraging what they already learned from the normal Illinois factory when they were, they were building R1 and EDV. So they have a lot of expertise this will help them in building the R2. A lot of team members from R1 are already moving to or have moved to R2 and are, they are really praising the simplicity of this vehicle. R2 will be their first vehicle that will be mass produced. It will be streamlined. It will be a lot easier to construct. There will be a lot fewer parts. So this will be mass produced at a much quicker pace and it will be much more affordable with 40 to $45,000 range. If you throw in some uh, subsidies from the government, that can possibly even go down to a $30,000 range. So $30,000 pickup that basically has full charging infrastructure. It's basically a very fun vehicle to drive. 
it's very easy to make it's very easy to repair because there are fewer parts so this will be a home run from Rivian this will be huge this can potentially increase their revenues 10 20 30 fold just because we see this consumer demand for electric vehicles and we see Rivian building exactly what consumers want so this is a perfect match so that's it guys, just to give you a quick update on Rivian and R2. Basically Rivian is saying electrification of pretty much all automobiles is coming and it will be here much sooner than we anticipate. And R2 will, R2 is poised to take a huge chunk of that market. We will see millions and millions, tens of millions of units of R2s being driven on streets in the next decade. So, Rivian has a really bright future if everything goes according to plan and this is why I remain invested in the company. Regardless if they go up another 100 or 200 percent, I will be staying here for the long term. So that's it guys, thanks for watching, subscribe, like and share and as always just have a great day.